so welcome back to this year's Pixel Festival. And uh, now I have August and Betsy uh, back with me. Um, we had an interview last year as well. So, but now this year is it in real life we're going to have uh, We Are Here FM, isn't it? That's right. So for those who don't really know what, because they didn't tune in last year, can you guys just give it to the project? Sure, um, I can jump in. Um, so We Are Here FM is a project that we started working on during COVID. Um, and we were really interested in creating a portal to different places, hyper real places that have never really existed, but have the veneer of the real. Um, and we work together um, to, to create this experience which lives on the web but is also experienced at, you know, as a large installation where um, using geotagged audio files and panoramic images that are embedded in Google Maps, um, we create, uh, we, we bring together uh, media files that are all from the same 50 kilometer radius, but have never existed at the same time. And we uh, mix the geotagged field recordings together and create ge generative ambient music that accompanies them. Yeah, and I might add that um, maybe this kind of this piece fits in the genre of ambient new media it kind of sits there and lives on the web as a kind of sculpture. And so it's something you can kind of visit every now and then check out and kind of travel along with it as it hops to different places. Um, yeah. Yeah. One of the things, too, that I find really interesting about it is the idea of community, um, which is that it's an ongoing transmission that's the same for everyone. It is happening behind the scenes, not in an individual browser. And so you could be listening and trying to figure out what this place is at the same time as someone on the other side of the world. Um, additionally, when it is in person, um, depending on the size of the projection, you're really in scale at this landscape. So I think August is correct. It's, it's really an ambient uh, web sculpture um, that allows for people to experience it together. I should also say that um, that's a question that we yeah a sorry you'll have to start the uh, <laughs> um you just uh paused for a long time and then the screen went off so sure. if you could just say what you were saying for like the last minute again i'm so sorry oh i'm sorry <laughs> um <clears throat> basically i think that uh as august said it's a it's a web-based sculpture um that i feel that people can sort of circle around together, whether they're in the same room, seeing it as uh, an at scale landscape that they're in, or whether they're tuning into it at the same time, since it's um, uh, a web stream that is the same for everyone everywhere. Um, and to me, one of the interesting things about it and the decision that we had to make was um, that it uh, we don't say the name of where any of the media are from um, and that's because we really want people to to just imagine they have popped into this place we don't want their preconceptions about any given uh, geographical location to color how they figure out what this space is yeah it also gives it a sense of mystery right the first thing people want to know is like where is this where's the sound where's this place and like it could be almost anywhere it could be like in the ukraine or like down in Mongolia, you don't, you know, you don't know, but the fact that you get to imagine it, not have this sort of literal experience, but maybe more of a figurative experience makes it for us, I think, more interesting. Yeah. Thank you. And so we last spoke about 12 months ago. What has been happening in the last 12 months for you guys? <laughs> well, quite a lot. Um, well, one thing I'm going to be doing at Pixel is giving a workshop with my software, Mezcal. And Betsy and I and a bunch of other artists have ha been having fun doing a monthly broadcast called the, Con the Conduction Series, where we uh, make 
um, a live 50-minute broadcast on WGXC in upstate New York on FM um, every month. And that project has really been taken off and growing. Now we have uh, participants in and participating from Argentina. Um, and so now we're kind of saying we're, we're, we're broadcasting across the Americas, which makes us, you know, feel like we're coming back to these like globalist dreams of the 90s. Um, something I feel like we desperately need to do. Like we've kind of lost both the left and right are kind of isolating themselves and re like rejoining these nationalist tendencies on the right because they're xenophobes and on the left because they're afraid of globalist trade. And so I think we need to have some more of these hopeful uh, ideas. Um, maybe that sprung out of the, you know, the 90s net activism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Mezcal is really fabulous. Um, I wish I could be there in person at the workshop, but I think that everyone will get a lot out of it. Um, I'm really excited about all the other projects that we could be doing with Mezcal as well. So um, that's an ongoing project that we're collaborating on uh, with some others as well. Um, I also am working on a project that I started a few years ago which is a series of audiovisual songs. It's an audiovisual song cycle based on the idea um, of the memory of ice for future generations. Um, and I'm working with some singers in New York and uh, a choreographer here in Colorado to create um, seven <clears throat> videos um, with cinematography from really the top of the world, from the Greenland ice cap and mm -hmm. the largest um, Glacier, which which creates all of the icebergs, just about all of the icebergs that come into the northern hemisphere. Um, so I'm working on putting that together and thinking about uh, what can a gallery based opera feel like. So mm. that's something that I've been working on as well. And that's a project you've you've been working on for a good four years, right, Betsy? Uh, three years, three, years? three okay. years, but it's been, yeah, it was sort of bad timing. We, we shot it in um, the summer of 2019 and, and made a ton of field recordings and interviews and photographs and then was working on it. And we were supposed to workshop and record the songs in March and June of 2020. Obviously that couldn't happen. Um, but it also gave me some time to sort of reconfigure it from, I think, something that was perhaps a little more obvious into um yeah into a project that is is maybe more in depth and thoughtful i think that something i'm trying to avoid with that project is to making it nostalgic or sentimental or really politicized and what i'm really interested in right now is thinking of um, most of the footage other than these kind of fragmented dream collages that pop in and out with glitched music um, are really sort of very graphical drone shots of the ice and the rock itself. And I'm really interested in the idea of just witnessing what's happening, you know, what's coming through these cracks and fissures in the Earth's surface as the ice melts. Um, how is that changing us? Um, and really thinking about, um, yeah, thinking of it almost as hospice or some some idea of just sitting with the change not knowing what's going to happen and not catastrophizing it um, but being attentive to it and that's something that I want for the audience so each of the films are 10 minutes long and just consist of a single shot uh, apart from some glitched interruptions mm -hmm. And will you be developing We Are Here FM even further for next in the next 12 months? Or will you be collaborating on a different project? Or We don't have anything in the works right now, but I, we do hope to return to We Are Here FM. I think there, um, I mean, there's some, there's some interesting things we would love to set up, you know, not just like the single channel view, but I would love a like walk-in view where you have two or three channels and then we could also set up multi-channel audio and make it a real kind of visceral experience um i would love to set that up i'd love to set up like an orchestral mode where you can like have people go out with their phones put it on as everything's synchronized but just like slightly milliseconds off you can have this kind of chorusing effect um and so like one thing that we really find interesting about this project is all the various like performance or out output modes one one we've pitched a bunch of ideas with it and one idea would have like live performers play along with it and harmonize um like one of the main uh, 
compositional elements that Betsy put together is this sort of um, harmonization that goes on with it. And so there's a, there's a bunch of things we would love to play with it, but, but this is kind of a sleeper project. It's hard to get people to kind of slow down and pay attention to it enough to, to really get jazzed about it, but we are. <laughs> yeah, <We're just. laughs> and I would add, um, yeah, one of the things that I that really excites me is um, if we're putting it up as a as a spatialized audio piece, is that because the images are all three hundred and sixty images, I'm interested in the idea of having this almost um, you know Picasso esque fragmented images where different views coexist all at the same time. Um, Another thing that, that we've discussed is uh, using machine learning to change up the way that the, the audio, the, the ambient music is generated right now from the field recordings. Um, yeah, and just thinking about, we, we recently, um, last week we had the sound artist Maria Chavez in town uh, giving lectures in a workshop. And um, I was chatting with her about the project and thinking about you know, working with the individual streams. Um, I'm really interested in how performers could could use both the final stream and and improvise along with it, but also use all of the incoming Im images and sounds to do uh, some kind of improvised performance. So th those things are all in the works. Yeah. Well, thank you very much to you guys. Do you have anything else to add now? No, you don't. You don't have a residency at uh, Pixel for us to come and work on some of these things, do you? <laughs> well, you can come stay in a tent in the kitchen. That can be the residency. Awesome. <laughs> we can set, set up a little tent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish I could be there. And possibly virtually. I'd love to speak to yeah. so you'll have Thank to come over. Back. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to go eat more donuts now. <laughs> All right. Okay. Save, save one for me. Thank you so much, Kirsten. <laughs> Bye, Kirsten. Bye-bye. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs>